So we're here for New York Real Estate's prom night, the 2018 Rebney Gala. New York Real Estate is the greatest business uh, uh, of any in our country. Uh, New York is the greatest city in the world. And uh, we're going to become bigger than Hong Kong and bigger than, than Shanghai because New York is the capital of the world. We're standing here, as you can see, you're one of the few women leaders in the room. That's been something that real estate has been grappling with for a little while. Do you, do you see change on the horizon? I see more and more women uh, in real estate. I think real estate is one of the one professions that, really, that women can really, really rise to the top and succeed in. I have never felt I'm a woman in real estate. What explains sort of this disparity that we're seeing? It's still, still very much a man's, at least a boys club in here. That's because we have a lot of commercial brokers here, a lot of leasing brokers here, and a lot of development brokers here. If you go to the residential section, you will see there are a lot of female real estate brokers. Commercial real estate, still very much a man's world. Do you see changes on the horizon? There are so many phenomenal women leaders in the industry today to be mentors to women who want to come in these, whether it's Marianne Gilmartin, or Marianne Tai, or Darcy Stakem, or Tara Stakem, or Joanne Podell, the list goes on. The fact that you can mention those names and then the list stops is kind of the issue. Yeah, look, I think it is an issue. We have to recognize it as an issue, and then we have to say we're committed to doing something about it. There are a pool of talented women who I think don't know enough about the opportunities. It's not just brokerage, it's appraisal. It's investment sales, it's advisory work, global occupier services for us or corporate services or facilities management and project management. There's a range of things we have to educate people on as to where the opportunities are and then go out and actively seek women in these roles. Can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to leave Forest City and what went into that decision? Leaving Forest City is bittersweet for me, 24 years, but I've done really what I could do there and I've had this great run and I stepped into Bruce Ratner's shoes and I did that for almost half a decade and I've had a career quest to have an opportunity to really own a company. Co-founding and co-owning l and Mag is a career dream come true. So what sort of steps are you going to take to make sure that your company is diverse and that you're supporting other women in the industry? The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we are a tremendously successful organization. The best thing that we can do is demonstrate to the world that women are really, really good at this line of business. I brought over two women, so 50% of the team is women already. As you know, we have a very high percentage of women working at the organization at Forest City. And it takes a woman to be in the C-suite and a woman to be in the boardroom to ensure that more women get more opportunities. What do you think about what's happening with the tax overhaul, specifically the, the, feder the deductions and the SALT deductions? Tax bill is not going to help, but when you have 26,000 uh, stock market and people are making uh, a lot of money and that confidence, yep. consumer confidence is higher than it's ever been before and business people finally feel that Washington is not their enemy and they're taking money out of their pocket and they're spending money. Uh, I think it's important. How do you feel, John? Well, we're not penalizing investment anymore. Sure, some of the state and local taxes are maybe issues, but in the long run, if businesses continue to invest, wages will grow, rents will go up, and it'll be great for real estate. What do you guys think about the foreign capital? It's been a little bit of a slowdown, com money coming in from China, other places. Any concerns there? No concerns because the world could come to an end. New York is the safest place in the world for capital. When we met last year, there was a lot more uncertainty in the market, in the condo market, which is, which is your specialty. People were saying buyers aren't transacting, they're waiting, they're waiting for something. Has that impasse finally been broken? I think what you saw post-election a little over a year ago is there was a lot of pent-up demand. And for the first nine months to 10 months of 2017, a lot of activity, it slowed down as we came into the holidays, but we're still signing contracts across our portfolio. We still have activity, although you know, it is the middle of winter, it's the holidays, we're coming out of it. It's a little slower than what it would have been, say, three months ago. And are, are you having, uh, are you being forced to make more concessions or being budge a little bit more on pricing? 
What are you seeing in terms of pricing? Uh, we think that in general, you know, most buyers want some sort of discount. We're holding relatively firm on pricing. Yeah, you know, if someone is a serious buyer and comes in with a reasonable offer, we will talk. You go through these events. You're seeing 2,000 people. What's your sort of one trick of when you're when you're hitting, hitting sort of your reserve battery? What's the trick? What's your big schmoozing question? And how do you get through the crowd? Well, I don't think there's a big schmoozing question. If you enjoy what you do, you just keep going. What is your hope for the market this year? What would you like to see in 2018? Big picture, little picture? What would you like to see in the real estate market that maybe we didn't see enough of last year? I'd like to see um, additional strength and growth in the market on all segments. I'd like to see us make some headway on the issue of diversity within the community. And I'd like to see um, me lose another 20 pounds. Amazon named the finalists for its second headquarters and New York City made the cut. Um, can you talk a little bit about the city's proposal and sort of what comes next for the city? You know, if you want to have 50,000 of the smartest people in the world working in your company, there's really no better place than doing it in New York. And, and we have the talent and the institutions and the education, and we have developers who have stepped up to the plate to say, we are ready to have you in our buildings, you know, in 2019. And we have so many wonderful options to build out their campus that I am, I'm not surprised we made the shortlist, but I'm really happy that the, that the approach is working.